Uh, we're introducing Fluid. Uh, Fluid is a general purpose execution layer for Ethereum. Um, our kind of broader idea behind this is that there are what, 25,000 or so developers in Web3 today, but 25 million developers world, and we just legally should go to where they are. And don't make them have to learn all the blockchain specific details. Um, and we're really the product that helps us leverage that kind of Okay, so what does Fluid itself from the technology point of view? Fluid is, uh, as Dimitri just mentioned, is a general purpose uh, execution platform for WebAssembly languages. And the key feature of this is that it's designed itself for being executed on the WebAssembly itself. So uh, all this is possible because we have uh, our, our framework, we call it a Fluid Base. So what is Fluid Base itself? What's the idea of Fluid Base? So Fluid Base is a framework uh, that where you can upload your uh, WebAssembly binary and it is used to embed different extensions, circuits, and you can produce proof of this. So it automatically embeds, embeds things like our virtual machine, machine inside, also all the corresponding circuits that are required for the proof creation for all virtual machine partitions. Uh, also, it has uh, SDKs for creating apps using different like, uh, uh, so called adapters for different languages, for different even uh, high level SDKs. Also, it has uh, circuit extensions that are required to use to optimize some sort of uh, VM computations, for example, for running Kichak functions or Poseidon functions, and etc. And also, it brings uh, a set of uh, ahead of time compilers that uh, bring support of WebAssembly and the EVM support. Uh, of course, all this uh, possible because uh, we have our own virtual machine inside that it runs using WebAssembly, but actually, it doesn't run WebAssembly directly inside. Uh, what's the key problems of the WebAssembly itself? Uh, I'd say it's not even the problem of the WebAssembly. It's more like a problem of all existing uh, CPU designed architectures because everything we have today, right now, it's designed for uh, CPU computations that are full of uh, uh, binary operations and it's not friendly with any type of curve operations. So uh, the key problem of the WebAssembly here that uh, limits uh, exec execution a bit is uh, uh, that uh, it has a bit overcomplicated the binary structure that is full of relative offsets inside. And sometimes it's quite hard to prove things like uh, doing call operations, doing operations like uh, break between different uh, uh, positions in your bytecode. And uh, for example, if you have a very, very big WebAssembly binary and you need to execute only one small part of this, you need to uh, upload your WebAssembly binary entirely and create proof for the hash verification to parse all sections inside that is full of uh, variable elements and it's quite hard to prove. It, it, it requires to have a lot of gates inside. So what we do is we bring uh, Airwasm. We call it Airwasm right now. Uh, it means that they reduced WebAssembly. So the idea of Airwasm is it's 100% compatible with original WebAssembly uh, form uh, standards. So it doesn't mean that this follows binary structure of WebAssembly, but if you take any of existing WebAssembly binaries, you can translate it to Airwasm without losing any uh, type of compatibility. So 100% of all features from WebAssembly are supported. Also, we run official WebAssembly specification tests, and it shows 100% coverage of all WebAssembly functionality. So what is Airwasm? Airwasm is a reduced WebAssembly that brings uh, uh, a reduced instruction set of the, of the WebAssembly. So uh, uh, to simplify, it's just intermediate representation. But its intermediate representation has a binary structure that is also optimized for the Poseidon hashing for doing multiplications on the curve operations. So uh, it's, uh, uh, and also it of course uh, uh, doesn't have any sections inside. So we entirely remove all sections and we honestly remove entire WebAssembly structure by keeping uh, full backward compatibility with the original structure of, uh, with original features of the WebAssembly. So, and uh, the, the thing uh, that uh, we embed Airwasm inside the Fluent Base framework and Fluent Base runs Airwasm. Also, we, we embed our framework uh, our sorry execution runtime inside execution runtime itself. So if you run some execution uh, flow, you can uh, run like uh, some some sort of contracts. You can run some uh, different types of applications, and we also support, as I mentioned before, ahead of time compilers that can be used uh, to uh, translate uh, your uh, original binary from EVM structure from WebAssembly structure to our uh, sp special reduced structure, and you can run this and prove without any additional computation overhead. 
So the, the only thing that is required, honestly, this is the key goal of the Fluent, that you can, it has internal uh, tree structure, and it stores information about your execution binary, and you can upload uh, any type of binaries, and it automatically translates to uh, the optimized uh, version, and it can run without any additional overhead. And if you want like, to, to call the contract, to call your application, to interact with your application somehow, no matter what size of this application, how complicated the structure is, uh, you can, uh, there is no need to, load, uh, to upload your WebAssembly binary and parse it and verify uh, entirely. Because our, uh, our intermediate language is designed to have uh, more like, uh, uh, designed to have uh, like, uh, so you can easily upload the binary and run as is without any verif additional ver validations, verifications, and et cetera. So this is the idea of the Fluent that has Fluent base inside and have Airwasm inside. And also one thing that we optimize for the Airwasm that is also very important is how you interact with external modules and external functions. Because uh, if you want, for example, embed some circuit accelerated extension inside your binary, you need to put special item into your section, you need to parse, it has ETF8 encoding inside, that is quite a bit hard to prove using ZK, and, uh, and also you need to prove all relative offsets inside, that is a bit over complicated, so we also optimize this, and we reduce all this computation to only one instruction, and only one lookup element, so you can easily look up the existence of this special optimized circuit for your function, and for the regular developer, it looks like a uh, uh, developer just uh, invokes some function, that uh, uh, he or she imports in, into the model, and uh, we're going to provide a set of uh, optimized circuits. We call it like extensions or external circuits, and you can embed different circuits. So what's an example of such circuits? Uh, we can bring support of things like, uh, uh, honestly, we already have partial support of VICE execution environment, so you can compile your glibc applications. Also, we have support of uh, ZK trees, we have support of Miracle Patricia trees. Also, we have embedded uh, Airwasm itself. So Airwasm can prove uh, uh, it, uh, its instruction self inside without any additional overhead or additional computation costs. And also, we're going to bring all extensions for the creation of the Ethereum apps. So like everything that uh, refers to RLP encoding, you can do using only one function and automatically replace all your computations with, uh, with our circuits. So, how much time do we have? Are we over? Q and A. If is if there's any questions, we'll take them. If not, I, I'll probably ask Kim some questions to clarify some things. Okay. Yeah. How does this compare to Polkadot's Wasm or other implementations of you know Wasm on blockchains? Like, oh, what specific implementation of Polkadot Wasm? Do you mean Wasmi? Interpreter or what specifically? Uh, I don't know that much about Wasm, but uh, I, the poke, the Wasm that's used to write polka dot uh, smart okay, contracts. Okay, okay. So, so uh, yes, WebAssembly is just a standard, and uh, we here strictly follows WebAssembly standards. Uh, it feels like that uh, Fluent Base is something like a substrate for the polka dot, but uh, we don't support the polka dot structures. We don't support Polkadot uh, uh, host SDKs, uh, but uh, the key feature of the Fluent is that we can embed Polkadot native functions inside Fluent Base. And if someone wants to run uh, uh, ZK optimized circuits using Fluent Base, we can just develop a special set of extensions and SDKs for, for the Polkadot, and uh, we can bring almost native support of the circuits into the uh, Polkadot, into the Fluent Base to bring uh, support of the ink contracts, for example, or even running the substrate. So using Fluent Base, you can build ZK Substrate, for example. And just to add on that, like the way we think about what we're building in comparison to kind of some of the other WASM approaches in the space and history is, um, I mean, we, we kind of separate it and say like, okay, there's like the consensus part of things and social layer part of things, and then there's like the execution part of things. And we think that like WASM was always, execution was always like a good idea. And I think what's really the best way to implement it is in kind of like a permissionless sense in a layered architecture on top of like a consensus layer and a social layer that's already gained like escape velocity. Um, and yeah, that's kind of how we think about it. Uh, any other questions or any more time? We can do one more question. Um, do you have an estimate of how much your like wasm binary sizes increase when you translate to our wasm? 
Um, actually, it increases because we align all instructions with the field elements. Right now, we consume around nine bytes per uh, one instruction, and the size of this is, is all, all, always fixed. It is required to uh, simplify uh, the circuit for the Poseidon hash verification, so we don't have to spend additional columns in case for the verification of the of uh, of the, the field uh, input for the Poseidon hash. And uh, so it increases right now, but at the same time, uh, we did several measurements. For example, one transition cost for the EVM cost around 1.2 million instructions. Uh, in our implementation with uh, the optimized translation, we have only 0.5K instructions. So it can bring up to two times, up to three or, or two or three times optimizations. Of course, it's not like, uh, it, uh, it's only about a number of instructions because under the hood we runs our circuits. And we, so like it, it's something I feel it feels like uh, a uh, programmable scroll, or f f f for example, programmable ZKVM. If you take the code base or the PSE of the scroll uh, and you modify this, you also need to modify circuits. So here you can uh, uh, prove all transitions from one circuit to another circuit using, uh, using WebAssembly language. And you can use any like, of existing languages like Golang, Rust, and etc. Thank you guys. Dino and Dimitri, give them a round of applause, please. <laughs>